A reading from the book of Psalms. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence theme, in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A reading from the book of Galatians. For Paul, the freedom Christ gives is not permission to do whatever we want. It is the invitation to be what we could not be otherwise. The power and guidance of Christ's Holy Spirit produce a different kind of life one marked by the fruit of this Holy Spirit. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, Take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, cruels, dissensions, fractions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Would you join me in welcoming Josh Geyer to our midst? Good morning, everybody. Uh, as has been said a couple times, my name is Josh Geyer. I'm a gift consultant in the Mission Support Office at Wartburg Theological Seminary in Dubuque, Iowa. And Wartburg Seminary is, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, is a place in a space where intentional community gathers together of professors and support staff to worship together, to pray together, to learn together, and receive those who are called from the church for gifts, uh, to, to serve in the church. And we take those people and we lift them up and we educate them and send them out into leadership roles in the church. So the short of it is we train pastors and leaders for the church. And I am what I would consider a relationship builder. Uh, I work in the mission support office, but I get the privilege of coming here and sharing the mission of Wartburg Seminary, and I get the pleasure of meeting with individuals who are concerned about the future of the church and leadership in the church uh, and are interested in supporting, and I just get to connect people to their passions and missions in the church, so I consider myself very privileged to be doing what I'm doing. And at the risk of derailing what I have carefully put together. My wife has always warned me that uh, while I enjoy telling stories and 
uh, I, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm quite the storyteller, she says. I, I digress, and here is my first digression. So, uh, but I did want to say thank you immediately for something that was unexpected, which was the invitation to think about leadership and ministry at the very beginning of service. I wish that were part of every congregation's uh, uh, service. As some congregations have altar calls every Sunday, in the ELCA, I think it would be appropriate to have leadership calls and reminders for leaderships every Sunday. Uh, and in particular, uh, uh, it, this, this story might be appropriate for this congregation. Uh, the call to ministry starts as early as, you know, children running around in the, in, in the, first, uh, in the first row uh, uh, into all the stages in our lives. Uh, uh, we have many folks come into, congr uh, come into the seminary from, uh, directly from college. But uh, um, uh, we did have one person uh, who was 65 years old, received a call to ministry, uh, and was interestingly uh, a Rockwell engineer, uh, and, 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 uh, and lived in the area, and at the age of 65, uh, received a call to ministry, came to Wartburg Seminary, served his first church when he was 70 years old, uh, and, uh, and served for, for, for a few years. So. Uh, it's never too early and it's never too late to be hearing the call to ministry. So I just thank you for, for lifting that up. That was the digression. I'm stopping it. I'm getting back. What I would like to do today is really do two things. Uh, I would like to tell you in my own words why I think you here, each and every one of you, are such an important part of the mission at Wartburg Seminary. And I would like to share with you via a video uh, in the words of our students and our alumni and the folks in their congregations, why they think Wartburg is an important ministry and mission for the church. Now, for the first point, uh, this congregation in more than 20 years and with more than $20,000 has given to Wartburg Seminary and supported our mission. And while we are giving ourselves a round of applause, I invite you to be proud of that. Thank you for that. Uh, and while you think about it, I can tell you with a certainty that the impact of those dollars is, is incredible. And I would like to invite you to, th to, to think about that type of support in a very particular way, and the gifts that you give to this part, to, to even this place in a particular way. Uh, gift giving, and these are my words, gift giving, I think, is a ministry of liberation. It's not simply, when you give your gifts to this place, you simply don't just give your money away as if it goes into the ether. But you give your mission, you give your dollars toward a mission and you invest in a mission. When you give your dollars to this place right here for these walls and the extension of this mission, you are freeing leadership to pursue their vocations and to be thinking and working with you intensely on how it is that your mission is gonna take expression in this place. It frees leadership to be spending their time most preciously and most intently on living out their vocations every day and not worrying about where resources are coming from. You are freeing ministry with the dollars that you give to this place. With the shelter down the street or with the food bank down the street, the dollars that you give there are freeing the staff and the directors there to be doing what it is that they do best, to be following their vocations, which is serving people in need, serving displaced people, serving abused persons so that they can provide a safe place for them, a safe space for them, so that they can be, get back on their feet and they can start moving on and moving together in their lives. You are freeing them to do their ministry. It's an incredible thing that you guys are able to do. It's an incredible part, and it's an incredible extension of the ministry of this place that you are liberating and freeing ministry so that they don't have to worry about where resources are coming from, that they can worry about what it is that their mission is, and they can worry about serving the people in the best way they possibly can. And it's the same with the dollars that you send with, to Wartburg Seminary. You are freeing our professors and our support staff to be thinking most intently and most passionately about the ways that we can best serve our students and by extension best serve the future of the church. So I wanna thank you for that. The resources that you send are incredibly impactful and they're incredibly meaningful and they allow us 
to do a mission that ultimately serves all of us. So thank you for that. And so while, I, I, while you think about that, uh, I would like to share with you uh, a video uh, which, is, uh, which includes our students and our alumni and the folks in our alumni congregations just reflecting on why they think Wartburg is a great place, uh, a great mission for the church and a great place to be training pastors. And while this is going on, think about the reality that you make this happen. Truly, you make this happen. Uh, and you are a part of this mission. For me, what stands out for Wartburg is just a beautiful community. It's the community of support, but also of challenge. Both are integral to growing and shaping who we are as, as children of God, but also as leaders in the church. Wartburg shows people how to connect with one another. Um, Can you bump up the volume a little, Wayne? That gives the Holy Spirit room to really move and work and breathe um, and change lives, really. For more than 160 years, Wartburg Seminary has been forming valued leaders for the church and the world. This worship-centered community shapes leaders who listen, who learn from real life, who think theologically, who see and nurture the gifts of others, who are focused on mission. Wartburg Seminary feeds bright minds and faithful hearts to become innovative leaders in today's challenging and complex world. And while those whom they serve may not know where it comes from, Graduates point to Wartburg Seminary as the source of their distinctive leadership qualities. Seminary education, especially through Wartburg Theological Seminary, is never just about book learning. There is always the component of how do you apply this and why is it important to the mission of the church and to the mission of your individual congregation. That balance there of, of real life and academic life coming together, and Wartburg offers that. We can learn something each and every day from, from being out there, but it also takes some intentionality um, to do that reflective piece of it. As a congregation, we definitely take people through from baptism through their death. But in, in the middle there <laughs> is a long period of time, hopefully for most people, of ministry and mission. To be with people in those tender spaces of their lives, whether it's a new life or a death or a marriage, um, it's, it's a privilege to walk with people in that way. How we are going to be leaders in that and um, how we bring the gospel to the people of God and serve the people of God. And that doesn't happen in here, it happens out there. So uh, helping people to see that is important and absolutely something that's stressed at Wartburg Theological Seminary. Wartburg Seminary teaches you not what to think, but how to think, and how to think particularly theologically and from a Lutheran perspective as well. And that is vital. The deepest and most important learning for me at Wartburg was um, the theology of the cross. Um, there are so many people who are suffering and um, who, by the world standards, should just get out of their dark hole and move on. And yet we have this incredible God who suffers with us. Um, and that resonates with people in their lives um, to the core. All of that knowledge that a person gains through going through seminary, it's huge and it's, it's something that 
through his experiences, has kept the rest of us pretty well grounded. Here at Wartburg, uh, I'm being prepared um, to be a minister in, in nearly any context with nearly any type of people. And, um, and that can only happen through, through a lot of listening, um, less talking and more listening. Everything begins with listening, being able to hear what someone else is saying. And when folks are sitting across from you, they're looking and watching um, you to see, are you really listening? Do you really care about what I'm saying? Leading change in a church starts with listening. Um, and then um, harnessing the unique gifts of each person that God's given them to, to help us to go from here to wherever that is that God's leading us. I'm tapping into the great ideas that already exist in these pews and the gifts and the skills that are already here and helping people to use those gifts and skills. They're the ones making the difference. To explore what are my strengths truly and what are the strengths that I bear that might be really valuable within the church setting. He enables people to lead with their skills and their abilities. She does a great job of understanding and finding strengths of individuals in the congregation to help lead. He recognizes what you are good at. It's like being an orchestra conductor and helping everybody to play the most beautiful music they can with the instrument they've been given. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> During a sermon any given Sunday I can say, what's our mission here at Easter Lutheran Church? And probably 90% of the people will say to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. And that's really cool, you know, to, to be serving in a place where people are so um, invested in the mission. Sustainability is, a, is key to this congregation. And sustainability occurs with an inward understanding of what, it, what our mission is, what it means to be the church. She really shared with us what her mission was the last time we had an evangelism committee. And it's very far reaching and I was really surprised how far reaching it was. It isn't, it isn't just to grow this church. He always keeps us focused and grounded on what our mission is as a congregation. The way in which they really connect is by putting their faith into action. We're concerned about our neighbor and we're concerned about global issues. Wartburg really empowers us you know, to do justice and to um, to live the faith that we have, um, freed by Christ. Hopefully, uh, as we go out into the world and serve in, in various uh, ministry sites, that we bring a little bit of that Wartburg community with us. We're being called to reimagine what church is. And if you know we can continue to educate leaders who have that passion for transformation um, in community, then I think that there's a lot of hope for the future of the church. Just a few uh, last remarks. Thank you again for allowing this to be our mission. Uh, thank you for the ministry here. Thank you for the ways in which it, it, it helps us. And thank you for the ways in which you're encouraging one another to explore what it is uh, to lead and what it is for uh, all of us together as a church to be moving forward uh, uh, in leadership and in mission. Thank you very much. <laughs>